Coming up on today's show, stocks start the week higher led by tech, on talk that the Fed may be done, and an upgrade on Tesla sends shares soaring 10%, the warning from Jamie Dimon, what to expect from Apple's new iPhone release tomorrow, and a special offer to get all of my custom indicators. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Click Capital. I hope you had a great weekend. My name's Jared, and just before I run you through all the most important news, data, and charts as I normally do in the daily show, let me first explain to you the special offer I'm having this week. And for those of you who regularly watch the channel, know that over the last couple of years, I've developed my own custom fundamental and technical indicators for the TradingView platform. And with the release of my latest indicator dark pool percentage and optimal stock bond allocation, that now takes my total list of custom indicators to 22. And I think this latest one dark pool percentage is my best indicator to date from what i can see it is the first and only one on trading view to offer insights into what some of the biggest and best traders are doing out there across all us stocks and etfs and stick with me today because i'll show you some examples of that indicator on some of the most popular stocks and what traders are doing in those stocks in addition to the dark pool percentage indicator my latest one is optimal stock bond allocation which again is based on my own unique valuation algorithm of stocks versus bonds and each month will tell you what the optimal weighting is between stocks and bonds and you can see data on that going back over 150 years. In addition to these latest two indicators you'll see me on this video today and in my normal daily market show use all my other technical indicators to analyze the markets for you guys and I also have some other unique indicators on the platform that I regularly use as well. And one of them is stock fair value, which uses fundamental data to calculate a fair value price on every stock around the world. That's over 30,000 stocks, no matter what country you're in, you can use this indicator along with the business quality score to quickly get an idea of what a fair value should be for a stock and whether it's a quality business or not. In addition to that, I have a bunch of other indicators like seasonality forecast and other ones for more short-term trading like VWAP extremes. And these indicators can be used on any asset around the world. In addition to other ones like distance from the mean, the dynamic swing index, which is an improved version of the RSI, and even other ones like a buy the dip system, a one for option traders, the sector trends table, and wave flow. So normally all these indicators sell for $497. However, for this week only, you can get lifetime access to all 22 of my indicators for just a one-time fee of $237. That's more than a 50% discount, and all you need to use my indicators is a free trading view account. Then you just come to my website, clickcapital.io forward slash deal. I'll put the link below the video in the description. And then you just enter your email address and TradingView username and check out safely and give us a few hours and then your TradingView account will soon have access to all of my indicators and you'll see them under the invite only script section in your indicators. And these are the same indicators I use to manage all my own portfolios, including the only bears portfolio on the Collective 2 marketplace. And this is independently tracked by them. I enter all trades into their platform in real time. It's all publicly verifiable. And these results are after the cost to follow my strategy on there too, which is $75 a month. And you can see since December, my strategy's returned 26%. And just to give you an example of a recent trade I made in this strategy using my indicators was back on the 5th of July. I shorted Tigo Energy at 1865, you can see here, and I'm still holding it short today. And it's gone down more than 50% currently at 871. So just looking at the chart of Tigo Energy, you can see I shorted it around here. And if you look down here on the left at my stock fair value indicator, you can see it's got fair value at $6.30. And the business quality score is negative as well. And so those two fundamental indicators along with my technical indicators gave me the confidence to pull the trigger on a short. And here we are now just a few months later at $8.71 and still a bit above fair value. So I'm still holding this, this position short. And when you look through all the positions in my only bears portfolio, you'll see that they're all really overvalued compared to my stock fair value indicator. And this is what this strategy is all about. It's my hedge strategy that only takes short positions, always has 20 short positions open in a diversified portfolio. And the market hasn't even done a big correction yet and it's already outperforming the market. So I'm looking forward to when the market does inevitably do a big correction or even possibly a crash. I expect all these stocks to melt away just like ice in the sun. But you can also use my stock fair value indicator to find undervalued stocks, not just overvalued stocks. And again, for those who regularly watch my channel you'll remember back at the start of the year I was calling the bottom on Tesla when I was in the low 100s and a big reason for that was the valuation on Tesla for all the years prior to that I'd never seen Tesla trade underneath my stock fair value indicator 
However, at the start of this year, it did significantly because you can see down here it had fair value at around $184 a share right when it was getting down to the low 100s. And we had some pretty big bullish divergences showing up on my indicators as well down here. And even though I didn't know it at the time because I've just developed this new indicator, dark pool percentage, back then the dark pool buyers were also loading up on Tesla shares. And you can see that by all this green. And that's daily readings over 55%, which should be considered bullish. And we can see recently, just as Tesla dipped in the middle of last month, the dark pool buyers bought that dip. And we can also see on my regular indicators, the price of Tesla also got underneath my buy sell band. And we went into oversold territory on the DSI as well. And so that's part of the reason that the market is up big today is because Tesla ripped 10% on really strong price action caused by an upgrade by Morgan Stanley, which said Tesla's doji supercomputer could drive a 50% more upside and could add another 500 billion in market cap to the stock. They said the same forces that have driven AWS to reach 70% of Amazon total earnings before interest and tax can work at Tesla in our view, opening up new addressable markets that extend well beyond selling vehicles at a fixed price. The Catalyst Dojo, Tesla's customer supercomputing effort in the works for the past five years. And Dojo will help improve Tesla's full self-driving technology, which requires immense computing power. And I agree, I think the market and a lot of people are underestimating Tesla's AI capability. And just like now they, they own the industry with the supercharging network and all the other biggest EV makers out there kind of jumping on their back to use that. The same thing could happen with their full self-driving and AI technology as they're going to have one of the biggest and most powerful supercomputers in the world collecting a ton of data and just leading the way in autonomous driving and robo taxis. And so in addition to home clean energy products and the Cybertruck, Tesla still has a lot of catalysts in front of it that should keep it trading at a high multiple for many years ahead especially when they're already growing their earnings faster than all the other mega cap techs, clocking in around 40% year over year. And so that's why we got that strong rip in Tesla today, which also helped the NASDAQ lead the way out of all the US indices up over 1.1%. Also helping the market feel good and trade up to start the week. There's talk getting around that the central bank is likely to pause rate increases in September. And then some are saying that a shift is underway in the Fed officials stance towards rate hikes and that we may be actually done as they really prefer to see how their 11 rate hikes over the last year and a half are going to impact the economy over the coming months. Also helping that sediment over the weekend was Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying she's increasingly confident that the US will be able to contain inflation without major damage to the job market. Pointing to data already showing a steady slowdown in inflation and a fresh influx of job seekers and just like all people at the Fed of course, they're going to talk up their own book and sell the idea of a soft landing. Politically, they kind of have no other option but to do and say that. However, I would say in the back of their minds, they know for inflation to really get down to under 2%, there's likely going to have to be some pain in the labor market. And maybe that's why we've got one of the most respected men on Wall Street and CEO of the largest bank in the world, JB Morgan of JP Morgan, saying today that to say the consumer is strong today, meaning you are going to have a booming environment for years, is a huge mistake. He's still warning of storms on the economic horizon, pointing to other things such as fiscal deficits and monetary policy. Other things he pointed to was the Fed's quantitative tightening campaign, which is going to drain liquidity out of the system and saying there's a bit of a false sense of security out there. And so even though we've only seen a slight little uptick in the unemployment rate, the jobs market and the economy by a lot of measures is still holding up okay for now. We've got some things like retailers already warning that shoppers are struggling to pay credit card bills. And remember national credit card debt in the US just passed 1 trillion for the first time. And this is with rates at 15 year highs as well. And we're also seeing others in the space express the same concerns with Macy saying last week, that its second quarter credit card sales tanked 36% from the prior year. And so with student loan repayments starting up as well, the consumer is really not in a good spot should the jobs market turn since a lot of them are already tapped out with their credit cards and student debt. Also adding pressure to the consumer lately is the strong price action in oil causing the cost of gas to go up. And we have the squeeze on from Saudi Arabia and Russia with production cuts through to December. And we've got oil trading at a 10 month high and also helping that is US crude infantries at a 40 year low. As the Biden administration released a lot of oil to combat inflation in the last two years and general crude oil stocks are low as well. And we can see over the last 40 years, the US on average has had about 65 days worth of oil supply on hand and that's at the lowest point now that we've ever seen in that time period at currently at 46 days and just looking at the price action in crude oil today we are consolidating right under 88 dollars a barrel 
we look to have cleared this resistance zone, which was around $84 a barrel. And we'll be looking for that to hold and find support there if we do get a little bit of a pullback. And the higher this goes, the more pressure that should put on the consumer, along with a little bit of upside pressure on inflation as well. Another news out today, the maker of Twinkies, Hostess, agrees to be bought out by JM Smucker for $5.6 billion. And just looking at a long-term monthly chart, this has been one of the more successful SPAC companies as they came on to the market for the first time in 2016 at $10 a share, and the end result has been a pretty good one for investors as we're trading at $33 a share today. And that's right around fair value as well, according to my stock fair value indicator. And we can see just a month ago when we're trading down to $22 a share, we had fair value just below 31 with a pretty good business quality score as well. And no surprise at all to see dark pools were buying down there as well. Okay, so the big event this week is Apple launching their new iPhone 15, which they're gonna unveil tomorrow, along with the new Apple Watch as well. The event will be streamed on YouTube and Apple's website. And Apple and the market are really looking for the new iPhone to get sales growing again because the last couple of quarters, Apple's revenue has been down year over year. They might also give an update on the 2024 planned launch of the VR headset Vision Pro. It's unlikely we'll see anything new come out in the Mac and iPad range. And one of the big new things expected from the iPhone 15 is the use of titanium. Along with better cameras and another big change is gonna be the switch to the USB-C charging port replacing Apple's proprietary lightning port. And that's basically the same charging port that'll match Android phones, newer laptops, iPads, wireless headphones, and other gadgets. European regulators helped that come about by requiring a common charging port. And like I said, the big one is the new titanium casing replacing stainless steel, as titanium is lighter than steel and reduces the phone's total weight. And we'll likely see an update come out of the Apple Watch range, and they'll probably announce another few bits and pieces as well. And for proof that Apple does have really good pricing power with their products, we can see that in this chart here because the $499 price tag of the original iPhone in 2007 is about the same as $730 today when adjusted for inflation. So the market will be really looking for the consumer response to the latest iPhone and how many people will upgrade and what sort of orders come in. And just looking at the price action in Apple stock today, it was a little quiet. We did finish a little bit high here, 0.66%, but kind of looks to be in a bit of a wait in the C mode. And we can see in our dark pool percentage indicator, dark pools have still been buying today. So this is one we'll be watching closely tomorrow and whether it can break out and help propel the NASDAQ and the rest of the market with it as well. We've already got Tesla trading real well today. The other one we'll be looking at this week is Nvidia. Did close below its 50 day VWAP today. Looks like there may be a little bit of a dip buy. And for the market to find fresh highs, we're likely gonna need Nvidia to do the same. That means trading above $500 a share. So this is another one we'll be watching closely this week. There's a quick look at the heat map today. We can see Amazon and Tesla are the standout. And what's been a change of late is energy having a bit of pullback today. With most of the market trading pretty bullish. Not much in economic data to start the week off today. Nor tomorrow, but we are getting into it on Wednesday with the big one core inflation rate. The CPIs, and then going into Thursday, we'll be looking at the regular weekly jobless claims along with some PPIs, retail sales and finally finishing the week out with some manufacturing and industrial production data. Fed fund future traders are still given a slight probability to the Fed being done but still given a pretty good material chance that we may see another hike in November or December. However, I'd say the Fed is really hoping the next CPI reports come in on the downside so they can declare to the market that they're going to go on pause, as I think that's what they really want to do now. Fear and Greed Index is still right in the middle at 52. And after doing a lot of selling earlier on in the week, Corporate Insider pulled a little bit back on Friday, but still recorded more than double the amount of purchases. And just looking at my indicators for the S&P 500, we can still see the dark pool percentage at 39%. That's bearish and my S&P 500 oscillator is sitting at 53, which is in a neutral zone. So the market's neither technically overbought or oversold here. It's kind of right in the middle. And we can see that on the regular chart as well. Traded in a small range today, just above its 50 day. Looking at international stock indices, they had a good start to the week as well. All finished higher. There's volatility really low at 13.8. Breadth is still struggling to get above 50%. And we've still got a lot more stocks hitting new lows than new highs on the NASDAQ. The growth versus defensive sector spread just kind of holding up there and what could be a double top pattern. And a little bit of a jump there in the copper versus gold spread. And those inflation expectations continue to creep a little bit higher. There's the two year government bond yield sitting right below 5% and TLT getting right into this support zone here. What else probably helped stocks today was a little bit of a pullback in the dollar might be finding resistance at 105 and Bitcoin fell today into a support zone just above $25,000. Commodities still doing really well, found new multi-month highs today, along with uranium and agricultural commodities continuing to trade well. Over to stock sectors, 
and the cannabis ETF was the clear winner again today. And this has been a big move in and very surprising how strong the strength in this ETF along with the volumes. And my regular viewers know this is one I've been talking about for a few months now. And when I've been long since mid-June, I got in at 548. And some of you remember back then, it wasn't just the technical signs that I was seeing. And the prospect that the Safe Banking Act may go through this time. If not, hopefully we get federal legalization before the elections in November next year. I also pointed out in the videos the valuation of the actual underlying holdings in the MSOS ETF were also undervalued as well. And I showed in my video back then the valuation of them according to my stock fair value indicator. And one of the biggest businesses in the space, Green Thumb Industries. Our stock fair value indicator had it over $11 a share when it was trading around the mid sixes. And we've still got fair value a little bit higher. And a few others are still really undervalued as well. But there were a lot more undervalued a couple of months ago. And just looking across the cannabis space, there's a bunch of other smaller companies as well that are significantly undervalued that could still have the potential to run a lot further. And you can easily discover what those ones are with my stock fair value indicator as well. Looking across other sectors, semis still look to have stalled out a little bit. A little bit of a pop-up here in IPO back above its 50-day. Good performance today in discretionary stocks. And there's that bit of a pullback in the energy stocks. I'm a bit of a bearish engulfing pattern. And we're getting a few reversal signals here from my indicator. And we have been pretty overbought. Same deal on oil and gas. So we may see a little bit of a pullback here in the energy sector. However, in the medium term, I still like energy. And I still like the valuations that you can find in the sector. And the defensive sectors, healthcare, staples, and utilities got a little bit of a pop here. And over to popular stocks, we can see Microsoft traded up a little bit today, along with Amazon currently sitting at year-to-date highs, and Meta reclaimed its 50-day, along with Netflix not too far off its highs. Over to the meme space, pretty mixed out there today. Carvana continues to trade well in a really strong uptrend, and the regional banks still a little mixed, with the big guys still a bit soft as well. Okay, guys, that's a wrap for this Monday to start the week. And if you want to get lifetime access to all the indicators you've just seen me use, then head on over to clickcapital.io forward slash deal. I'll put the link below this video. And just enter your email address and TradingView username. Safely check out with Stripe, it's just a $237 one-time fee, and you'll get lifetime access to all the indicators you see on this page. And you'll automatically get any updates I do to these indicators, they'll automatically update in your TradingView account. Plus you also get all indicators I develop in the future free of charge. There's no ongoing cost from me, no sneaky upsells. All you need is a free TradingView account to use my indicators. And I also offer a seven day money back guarantee in case you change your mind, no problems at all. And I do have a bunch more cool stuff on the way, really unique stuff you won't find anywhere else. Taking technical analysis and your trading to another level. And I won't ever sell all my indicators for this low again, $237. And I mean one winning trade or one less losing trade could easily cover your lifetime cost of that. So it really is a great deal. If you're in the least bit interested in any of my indicators, I recommend you take advantage of that and you can have them in your account within a couple of hours now and start using them yourself. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you all again tomorrow afternoon. Cheers.